right, men, welcome to today's episode of Strong Men, Strong Marriages, how to boost your self-esteem. So last week we talked about self-worth, how to increase that. This week we're talking about self-esteem, and I'm going to review kind of my definitions of self-worth, self-esteem, and self-confidence. We're talking about each of those these next few weeks. Um, but yeah, like each of them are interrelated, but a little bit different. Uh, so today we're talking about boosting self-esteem, which to me is that relationship with yourself. How do you talk to yourself? How do you think about yourself? What are your overall thoughts and feelings towards yourself? Um, so my name is Mike Fraser, MD. I'm a psychiatrist and marriage coach, and I help high-achieving Christian men have more intimate marriages. So some wins, some wins from guys in my program, the Strong Men, Strong Marriages program, men are growing an understanding of their wives. So a lot of times, as high-achieving guys, we haven't done a great job, maybe, of listening to our wives over time, trying to understand them. Um and so guys are shifting that and changing that. Their wives are starting to respond and ask questions and be like, oh, you know, this is different. <laughs> and, you know, feeling more uh, more connected because of it. Guys are improving their relationships with their children. When you learn how to connect more with God, how to communicate better, how to understand yourself better, how to build trust, how to have great communication, how to have intimacy, not physical intimacy with your children, but mental and emotional intimacy with them. You know, just relationships just go so much better. Okay. Uh, guys are navigating separation and divorce in strong ways. Look, you know, sometimes even when you change, you become a great choice. The divorce still happens. Sometimes that's even the guy's choice because, you know, as he grows and develops, uh, he sees, okay, well, maybe this isn't the choice that I want to make anymore. Maybe this isn't the relationship that I want anymore. That happens, right? But you still want to be kind and loving in Christ, like even through a divorce and you totally can so guys are having great conversations and connections even after infidelity, which is huge, you know? So if you were the one that broke your wife's trust uh, through infidelity, that's a tough one to come back from, but you definitely can. It's just by taking these steps, rebuilding trust, uh, working a lot on your own self, uh, self-worth, self self-confidence, and uh, self-esteem because, you know, you can definitely beat yourself up about that and get into a very negative spot. <clears throat> But you'll learn today that doesn't really do you a whole lot of good. Um, so what you want to do, just as a tip on that, just get into her pain, get into her experience. That's what she's looking for. And show that you're going to be different over time. Those are the two things, really. Um, guys are improving their sexual relationships with their wives. They're you know, asking for more, uh, expressing themselves more, having more intimate uh, connection that way, which is great. Uh, for me this week, I've been able to turn some conflicts into connection. My wife and I had some conflicts, able to reconnect after, build more connection. My son and I do have some conflicts, build into more connection. Uh, it's good stuff. You know, we're, we're always going to have conflicts in our relationships, but if we have those skills, we can turn those into opportunities for more connection, more understanding, more intimacy. So I was able to do that this week and guys in the program too are, are doing that as well. So to kind of review my definitions of these three things that sometimes get mashed into one, but I think it's helpful to separate them. So self-worth is your value as a person. So this is inherent. Uh, a lot of us think, well, it's not inherent. It has to do with what I achieve or what I accomplish. Uh, that's not accurate. And when you try to put those into it, look, self-esteem and self-confidence actually do kind of have to do with your, uh, you know, what you achieve and accomplish and things like that. They, they actually do. But your self-worth is separate. Okay, It's like a baby, when they're born, they don't have to do anything to be valuable. Same thing for you. You're a beloved son of God. He's well-pleasing you just because you're his, right? That's your identity. That's who you are. Okay. Now, this is going to work for Christian people. If, if you're not a Christian person, uh, first of all, I'd recommend it. <laughs> but um, if you're not, right, your, your self-worth, you got to have it somewhere that's not based on accomplishment, achievement, because it's just not going to work. So even just that idea of seeing as a baby, right? Babies don't have to do anything to be loved and valued. And like, no matter what your beliefs, I think you can agree that in like the scheme of eternity, you know, we're all babies, you know, we haven't progressed that much. And so if you can see yourself and give yourself that grace and just say, wow, like you're an amazing creation, of God is what, you know, a believer would say, a non-believer might say, I'm an amazing creation of, you know, evolution or whatever, right? A lot of things had to come together for me to exist. And that's amazing just in itself. You know, having that sense of self-worth is going to take you a long way. Okay. So then there's self-esteem. So self-esteem is what we're talking about today. And this is your relationship with yourself. So what is your relationship with yourself? Your relationship with yourself is your thoughts and feelings about yourself. 
Right? A lot of us as high achieving guys, we don't take time to kind of think about that. Huh? What do I think about myself? You know, Mike Frazier, what do I, what do I think about Mike Frazier? Who is he? Is he somebody I love? Is he somebody I value or not? Okay. Or am I always kind of hard on him and hard on him for his mistakes and things like that? You know, this one I'm still working on. It's coming, it's getting better, <laughs> but, um, yeah. And then self-confidence is your ability to trust yourself to do what you say you'll do and your ability to trust yourself to do certain things. So self-confidence does come from accomplishment. Like you can have, um, you know, let's say I want to learn to, uh, skateboard. Okay. I'm really, I'm really bad at skateboarding. Um, so I don't have a lot of confidence in myself because the times I've gone, I've been able to get like one push off and fall down. So my, my confidence in skateboarding is not good. Okay. Does that affect my self-esteem? It could, if I let it, right. I could tell myself things about that, that would impact my self-confidence. Okay. And if my self-worth is tied to my accomplishment, it could affect that as well. But when we separate these, right. And we say, okay, well, my, my value as a human being isn't affected by my ability to skateboard my self-esteem. I'm going to choose not to have that impact my ability, right? I may just tell myself, Hey, like this is a new skill. It takes time to learn it. If I want to learn it, I need to put time into it. You know, maybe that's not my gift and that's fine. I can admire other people that do it. You know, then my, my self-esteem, my relationship with myself is still solid, even if I'm not skateboarding well. Now my self-confidence in skateboarding is still going to be low and that's fine. Right? Like for, for me, like I've decided I'm okay not being a great skateboarder and that's fine with me. So but again, when we when we tie them all together, that's when we get into trouble. When we separate them, okay, it be that's when we can be successful, right? So again, self worth, your identity it's based in God. You're an amazing creation of God. You've got certain gifts and talents that are that are yours, you know. And now that's amazing, right? You're great just because God made you. Okay, the, from yeah, you are special. Uh, you know, you're special because God made you, and God doesn't make mistakes. Okay. Or like a baby, you love that baby just because it exists. Okay, that's your self worth, your self esteem, how you talk to yourself. So sometimes that needs some work. But if you can remind yourself, hey, like I've got these gifts from God, and look at how I've used them, look at how I'm growing, right? That creates a loving relationship with yourself. And then self confidence is going to be, you know, come from you. This does come from action, right? So you following through on your commitments to yourself and others, that's up to you, right? That will build your self confidence. Okay. And then your ability to trust yourself to do certain things. So if you want to be confident in certain activities, that does depend on you doing those and working on them until you're confident that you can do them well. But again, like they, they tie together somewhat, but if you can separate them, that gives you so much more power, right? So talking about self-esteem today, as high achieving men, we're often trying to reach certain goals, right? So physical and financial goals are common ones. I want to do this many push-ups. I want to, you know, I have the goal to dunk a basketball. I want to lift this much weight, whatever. Um, I want to run a mile in this much time uh, or financial. I want to make this much money. I want to save this much money. I have this much money. They're, they're, they're nice because they're easy to measure. And as high achieving guys, we kind of like that of hitting those goals. Okay. Yeah. Like I lifted that much um, or I made that much money. Um, the problem, and we'll get into this is usually we're, we're trying to bring, you know, self-confidence into self-worth or trying to get our self-worth from our achievements. And it's a hole that can't be filled by achievements. And so when you hit, let's say you're trying to make a hundred thousand dollars a year, when you hit that, you're like, okay, great. Now, now I need to make 200. Okay. Now I need to make 300. Okay. Now I need to make 500. Okay. Now I need to make a million. Okay. Now I need to make 10 million. You know, it just, it never ends if you're trying to fill self-worth with achievement doesn't work. Um, but uh, in, as high achieving guys, again, we have these goals, right? We might have goals in other areas. Well, with my relationships, I want to have those. I want to have those great. I want to have those better. One that, and, and look, sometimes it, it can be helpful to put numbers on this. I've been doing that a little bit lately. Like I want a 10 out of 10 relationship with each of my kids and with my wife. So, you know, I sat down and talked to them. What does that look like? What, what would help us get there? It is actually a really valuable conversation because those are important goals. Um, a little harder to measure, but again, like we can, I think as high team guys, we tend to overly focus on these like measurable ones and kind of not as much these other ones, because again, we don't get that feedback as much from it. Um, but, but we can, right. We can have these spiritual goals. Oh, I want to, you know, 
help this many people in my church or help this many people in my business or whatever. But the, the problem is a lot of times high achieving guys, we always want to get to that next level. Okay. We always want to improve. We want to achieve. We want to be more. Okay. That idea of be more, you know, that's kind of our goal. I want to be more. I want to be better. Okay. The problem though, is that you never reach more. You never reach better. And so if your self esteem, the way you see yourself is based on, you know, being more kind of the overriding thought that you have is I can do better. But behind that thought I can do better is I'm not enough right now. Okay. And so what does that create as far as your feeling for yourself inadequate? Okay. That's tough. That's a tough place to be. But for a lot of us high achieving guys, that's where it's coming from. Okay. So yeah, we're saying things like, you know, we make these big accomplishments, you know, so like I finished medical school. Hey, that, that's pretty good. But, you know, now I want to do this. Now I want to become a business owner and, and, and do this and that. Right. Or sometimes we're like, hey, that wasn't good at all. You know, we talk to ourselves like, man, that was terrible. I can't believe you did that. That was so stupid. Right. Get down on ourselves. Like, hey, you can do better than that. You know, that was all right, but you can do better. Okay, this is, how, this is how we're talking about. Or talking to ourselves. We're like, hey, someone else is achieving more than you. Hey, look at this guy. You know, he graduated the same time. Look how much he's making. Or, you know, this guy is only this old and, and look what he's doing. You know, we get into that uh, comparison mindset. Um, or we talk to ourselves, hey, how could you mess that up, right? What's wrong with you? You know, you, you should know better. You could have put more effort into that. Okay, you should be farther along than you are right now. You know, you're, you're 30, 40, 50, you know, you should be further along with your relationships or whatever. You know, when we're talking to ourselves like this, and, and probably these sound familiar, I know they sound familiar to me. I know I've talked to myself this way a lot of times. But again, what relationship does that create with ourselves? If these are the thoughts we have about ourselves, okay, the feeling that we get from these is always wanting and needing more, okay? It leads to us not being able to celebrate our accomplishments. We hit it, oh, it's fine, but what's next, right? What's next, what's next? And people from the outside are like, man, like that guy's driven, he wants to achieve a lot. And sometimes we can, that's kind of how we see ourselves, but really what I want you guys to see is what that, what this kind of beating yourself up mindset does, it creates the feeling inside of you that whatever you do, it's not enough. In other words, you feel inadequate, okay? That's a lot of times the root feeling or the root relationship high achieving guys have with themselves. It's not enough. I've got to do more. It's not enough. I've got to do more. So they feel inadequate. That's the relationship they have with themselves. They beat themselves up so they achieve more. Okay. So the thing is, if our goal is always be better, be more, get to the next level. Okay. Will it ever be enough? The answer is no, right? It's never going to be enough. If our goal is just be better, be better, be more, there's always better. There's always more right? Okay. More isn't always better. So I was just uh, talking with the, um, one of the guys in the program about this yesterday. And so, you know, I've, I've lived in very different levels of uh, the amount of money that I've made and had over time. Um, and as far as my just joy and relationship with myself and happiness goes, they're not super correlated and the, and the um, research backs this up. I mean, once you're living kind of like taking care of your basic needs and maybe have a little extra, uh, more money from there doesn't really impact happiness all that much. Um, now, look, I don't have any problem with making a lot of money. Uh, it's just that if we think that's what's going to make us feel successful, it just won't, right? We always uh, level up to the next level. And I've done this to myself. Oh, when I make this much, that's going to be enough. And then I made it. Oh, well, uh, maybe I make this much, right? And just like keeps ratcheting up. Um, so again, like the problem with this mindset of I can do more, I can do better. The thought behind that is I'm not doing enough and I'm not good enough. Okay. And a lot of times we project this onto our wife. Okay, if you've heard yourself say things to your wife, like whatever I do, it's not good enough. Okay, she probably doesn't even think that, but you think it about yourself. And so you think your wife also thinks it about you. That's what projection is. Okay. So again, the overall thought that you have about yourself, when it's like, I can do more, I can do better. That's what that's hiding is I'm not doing enough and I'm not good enough. Okay, see if that resonates with you. You know, if really that relationship with yourself is I'm not, I'm not doing enough. I could be doing more. I'm not doing enough now. 
the overall feeling you have about yourself is inadequate, okay? Not good enough, not valued. Now, maybe that resonates with you from growing up. Maybe that message got put on you by uh, by parents, by caregivers, by, by coaches, by the church, by whatever, right? You're not enough. You're not enough. You're not enough. Okay. So you start feeling inadequate. So a lot of us, we have this relationship with ourselves of, you know, I can do better mask for I'm not enough right now, feeling inadequate. Another common thought that people will have, right? And I've had this thought for sure is like, people won't really love me if they knew they really knew me, right? If they knew all my mistakes, which masks for, you know, I don't really love myself because of my mistakes. You know, I made these mistakes. I can't really love myself because of that. So the feelings rejected. So you're kind of rejecting yourself and you're saying, well, maybe, maybe if I do good enough, I'll finally accept myself, you know, stuff. It's a hard place to be, but it's a common relationship that we have with ourselves, not just high achieving guys. I think a lot of people have this relationship with themselves that I'm not doing enough. I'm not good enough. I could be doing better, which you get masked for. I'm not doing enough. Um, or like if people really knew me, they wouldn't love me. In other words, I know myself and I don't love myself, you know, so I'm kind of rejecting myself. Um, tough, right? Tough place to be, but a common relationship we have with ourselves, which again is the thoughts and feelings you have about yourself. The hard thing about this too is often we have the same mindset with our kids um, with kind of mixed results. So if your kid is kind of more geared like you of like a high achieving mindset, they can kind of respond to this when you're like, hey, you can do better, you can do better. Like, okay, yeah, I can, I can, I can, I can do better. Um, but you're perpetuating this idea of not good enough. You know, what's behind you can do better is you're not good enough now, okay? And again, I'm going to get into this next because it's, I know some of you guys are thinking, well, what, you know, should I just not do anything? No, it's not that, right? Self-confidence depends on that. Um, and self-esteem in a sense too. And we'll talk about that. Um, but uh, yeah, when you're just like, come on, you can do better. You can do better. Some kids are going to respond really well to that. Some kids are going to be like, screw you, dad. And like, I don't want to even spend time with you, <laughs> right? I want to hear it. So um, yeah. I've done this to my kids. And so a word of warning, especially if you've got younger kids, like let's, let's take care of this now so you don't pass this on. Um, all right. So we've talked about what not to do. Don't have this relationship with yourself of uh, you're not enough. You can do better masking for you're not enough. Or if people knew me, they wouldn't like me. In other words, I know myself well and I don't like me. Um, instead, okay, go back to some of that self-worth stuff. Remind yourself how God sees you, okay? You're God's son. He's well pleasing you just because you're you. Okay. Just like you love a baby just for existing, God loves you just for existing. You don't have to do anything to earn that. Right. And then you can start seeing yourself that way. Hey, like I can love myself just for existing. Right. And that's great. So then the next step in really building up this self esteem, this relationship with yourself, is instead of focusing on that next level, which is, again, this is a book from, from a book called The Gap in the Game. Uh, by Benjamin Hardy and Dan Sullivan. So the gap is like, okay, here's where I am. We'll just use money because it's an easy example. Okay, I'm making $100,000 a year right now. Okay, but I want to make 200000 So if you're always focusing on that gap, okay, you're always going to be, oh, next level, next level. Let me get you 200. Let me get you 200. But that mindset of always focusing on that gap, it will follow you, right? So you hit 200. And then you're like, well, now I want 300, right? You're always focused on that gap. That's not good enough. And then your relationship with yourself is that okay not enough not valuable enough maybe when i achieve this i'll be good enough and then you get there you're still not enough okay so instead of focusing on the gap focus on the gain so the gain is the distance between where you are where you were in the past and where you are now okay so let's look, focus on money so i could do this for myself right now so you know my first job is making five dollars an hour <laughs> Uh, you know, from there I was, uh, you know, I did, I had a sales job. I, I made like, um, one of my first paychecks was like $900, uh, cause I made a bunch of sales that first time. And I, was, I, I thought that was incredible. You know, it was, and it was cause like I had no expenses. So that was all, I could use that all on fun stuff. I, I used it on a girlfriend is what I used a decent amount of that on at the time. Um, but, uh, you know, then later on I had jobs that were paying, you know, $15 an hour. I thought that was awesome. You know, compared to $5 an hour, that's great. Um, and then, you know, a salary of 50,000 and then, you know, hundreds of thousands uh, being a doctor. Um, so 
you know, when I think about it that way, and even just reflecting on that, that gain is like, man, wow, like, look how far you've come. That's awesome. Right. So then I'm starting to feel like enough and I'm starting to see myself as someone that, yeah, like I was actually fine back then. I'm, I'm making that much money. I'm fine now making the amount of money that, that I make. Would I like more? Sure. Yeah, I, I, I would like more, but it's not now coming from this place of, oh, like I got to get it so I can finally be enough. It's like, no, I already have enough. Do I want more? Yeah, sure. You know, it's, it's fun to have more. <laughs> I can, I can do more good. I have more options, you know, with more money. Um, so take a minute for yourself, kind of do this exercise, you know, where have you grown financially in the last 10 years, right? Uh, or 15 years or whatever. How have you grown spiritually? So for me, man, like it's been a big spiritual journey. So I, uh, I used to feel really like, you know, God was disappointed. And a lot of this has to do with some of the stuff we're talking about today. Oh, like I'm, I'm, I'm never going to be good enough. Thank goodness Jesus is there. So I can't be good enough. Um, instead now starting to see myself as no, like I was born good enough. I was born worthy. And yeah, thanks to Jesus, I can kind of partake in that and be that beloved son uh, with, uh, with God. And that's awesome. Like that's a big spiritual growth. And I still have lots of questions and things like that. And I'm, uh, still figuring things out, but man, to me, that's a lot of spiritual growth. And, um, that's grown my relationship with my wife, with my kids in really powerful ways. Um, have you grown mentally, emotionally, man, for me, geez, doing this podcast and, uh, sharing, you know, I've shared a lot of the journey on here. If you start from early and follow through, hopefully you've seen some growth. <laughs> I, but, Again, like it doesn't matter because I have, right? And that's kind of the thing too. For our self-esteem, it's about our relationship with ourselves, what we think and feel towards ourselves. So, you know, when I look back and say, man, yeah, like look at the, the thoughts I had then versus the thoughts now, even just in this last little bit, a lot of emotional growth of this idea of releasing emotion instead of managing it. You know, that was a big breakthrough for me just recently. Um, have your relationships grown? So, you know, better relationships with my wife, with myself, with my kids, with God. Um, so now some of you, you, you know, hopefully you know, just pause, pause and take a minute and just say, man, like, where are you? And you can start now your relationship with yourself becomes different, right? So you start thinking, huh, like I'm someone that does grow over time, right? That's who I am. And I can feel adequate. I can feel enough. I can feel loved. Or you go back to those thoughts about self-worth. Yeah, I'm a son of God. And I feel loved and enough because of that. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, Mike, you know what? I've actually lost a lot of money in the last year, or I feel like I've kind of gone backwards spiritually, emotionally, or, you know what, Mike, my relationship was good, but now it's it's not with my wife. So in those in those situations, you know, just think to yourself, okay, like how can I how can I find a gain here? Like what and so the answer there is like, what wisdom have you gained from those experiences? Right? So let's say your marriage was great and now it's not. Okay, what wisdom have you gained from that? Because probably, so a lot of times what's happening there is you didn't actually have, you know, trust, communication, intimacy in your marriage. You kind of thought you did, but you didn't. You were using mosquito cycle, things like that. It was kind of working. Now it isn't. Um, you know, you were hiding the affair and then you got found out. So a lot of times you just kind of uncovered problems that were there when your relationship gets worse. Um, but yeah, like financial mistakes. I've definitely made some big ones even in the last few years. But what did I gain from that? A lot of wisdom. Um you know, a lot of growth from those things. And again, going back to self esteem, I can say, okay, like I'm someone who learns from those mistakes. And then going back to self worth, saying, hey, you know what? It actually doesn't impact my value as a person at all. Like, I'm not going to take that money with me. I have food, clothing, and shelter. That's plenty. I'm providing that for my family. That's great. You know, I can have that better relationship with myself. I'm enough. Like, I'm doing enough now. Feels a lot better than I'm not doing enough. Okay. Which will always follow you if that's your relationship with yourself. So there's a, a book, Mindset by Carol Dweck. She talks about this growth versus fixed mindset. It applies here. And a lot of it has to do with how we view, um, you know, mistakes and opportunities to learn. So like, if you're like, yeah, you know, I've kind of gone backwards. Instead of thinking, well, that means I don't have any skills. and I'm a loser, right? That's kind of the fixed mindset. And again, that relationship with yourself is poor because you're talking to yourself in a mean way. <laughs> so you're not going to have very good self-esteem if you're always down on yourself because your feeling towards yourself will be hatred, self-loathing, um, inadequacy, right? Unloved, rejected. Okay. That's not a good relationship to have with yourself. Um, yeah. Instead of that, looking at it from the growth mindset of, Hey, like, yeah, I've had those experiences and stuff. doesn't change my value as a person, right? Going back to self-worth and like, what lessons can I learn from it? Taking that growth mindset. Yeah. Mistakes are part of the deal, 
right? That's how, that's how we learn. There's, there's not really a different way to learn. Coming back to that skateboarding example. Yeah. I'm going to fall. If I'm going to try to learn, if I'm always trying to avoid the fall, I'm never going to, you know, push myself to grow in those, in those areas. The desire to grow, right. It doesn't mean, and this, this is the power of the gap in the game. The desire to grow doesn't mean you reject where you are right now. It's saying, Hey, like I'm fine as I am right now. And yeah, I want to grow too, just because I think it's fun, just because I think that's part of life instead of, yeah, I need to grow so I can be good enough. That's the difference, right? So, and and they can, I think that's where we, we have things messed up. You know, it's not wrong to have a desire to grow. I think that's inherent in us. You know, that's kind of that God-given thing that we have is a desire to grow and, and you know, become uh, more, but this book I'm reading, Follow the Cloud by John Stickle, talks about you know growing and becoming more of who we are, and I like that a lot. Like we're already sons of God with this great worth and infinite worth, infinite potential, and God's going to just invite us one step at a time to kind of uncover that. Okay, we've kind of covered it up ourselves, or you know other people have covered it up uh, on top of us, but God's just like, hey, like let me remove those layers so you can see who you really are. That's what growth is. So why does this work? So this works because when you focus on who you are, right, your worth and your gains instead of your gaps, okay, and learning versus beating yourself up for mistakes, okay, your relationship with yourself or your self-esteem shifts, okay? So your overall thought becomes like, I'm valuable just because I exist. And look at how much I've grown over the years, right? I'm someone that grows. I'm so like, I already have value. And, you know, look at how far I've come. So the feeling is valuable, loved, accomplished, right? Those are good feelings. And that's a good relationship with yourself. If your thoughts and feelings are ones that you want to have towards yourself. Okay. The, because again, a lot of us get trapped in the thinking, well, if I feel valuable, I'm never going to push myself, right? I'm never going to want to grow. It's not true. You know, when you feel like you have enough now, it doesn't stop you from wanting to grow. It's just the motivation changes. You're coming from abundance instead of lack. It's powerful. Okay. Another overall thought might be, hey, I'm someone who figured th- who figures things out. I learn from my mistakes. Okay, I'm still loved even though I make mistakes. That's a useful one, right? So you start feeling confident, compassionate, loved, accepted instead of rejected, right? And again, that fear of like it removing your desire to keep growing and figure things out, no, but it removes that neediness and urgency from it, okay? So do I still want to help more guys and make more money in my business? 100%, right? But I can either come at that from like, oh, like I didn't do enough and I didn't help enough guys. Or I can think, man, like, look at the guys I've been able to help. I, I love it. I love looking back at those stories and remind myself and seeing those wins each week. I love it. Um, and coming from that place and saying, man, like I want more guys to experience that. Okay. It feels way better. It doesn't stop me from wanting to grow, but um, it's just coming from a much better place. Or like, hey, I want a better relationship with my wife. You can either come from that with like, well, I don't have enough now and I want more, okay? We have sex once a week, I want it five times a week so I don't have enough, right? Instead of coming in like that, you can come in like, hey, we're having sex once a week, that's awesome. And those 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 connections are great. And I like to do that more often, right? It's 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 kind of subtle, but it's, it's everything, it's so important, okay? So coming from abundance instead of lack, right? So that book John, from John Sickle, again, this idea of restful movement, you know, that we can rest in God's value of us. We can rest in our value of ourselves, right? That's what I'm talking about today, self-esteem. How am I going to talk to myself? How am I going to feel about myself? Okay, hopefully loved, valued, accepted, uh, valuable, right? Uh, Accomplished. Those are all great things to feel towards yourself, right? And then the movement, so you can rest in that and move, right? And want more and desire to grow. You know, uh, again, like God's going to invite you to take one more step to become more of who you already are, right? So what do you need to do this? So uh, this is the way to start living in abundance. And, you know, I'm glad I'm doing this podcast today because it reminds me of myself to to do this for myself, right? Remind myself of this relationship I want with myself. So self-esteem, again, the relationship with yourself, which is your thoughts and feelings towards yourself. So take, you know, if you didn't during the podcast, go back and listen or just write it down. Like what are your current overall thoughts and feelings towards yourself? My guess is for a lot of you, it's it's kind of negative, right? It's that you have that not enough mindset, or I could like I could I could be doing better, which is a mask for I'm not good enough, I'm not doing enough, okay? Which is gonna make you feel inadequate 
which will probably make you project that on their people and say, well, my wife's thinking I'm inadequate because really you're thinking that to yourself. Okay. And then you're going to take that on your kids too. You could be doing more. You should be doing more. Right. Guys, I've lived like this for years and years. It's, it's not a great place to be. So what skills do you need, right? To do this? Um, you know, you need the ability to have clear insight into your thoughts and feelings. So we kind of did an exercise today, but coaching will help with this, right? We can go through this together. We can we can ask you more questions, give you more examples, right? And and actually have you do it, right? That's that's kind of the biggest thing. Um, so you need to have clear insight, and sometimes it's hard to see, right? Maybe you got some more insight today um, through it. So coaching is going to help you see that that maybe you couldn't see on your own. All right. So then you, you need the ability to adjust those thoughts and feelings to help you get more of the results you want. So we talked about today, instead of I'm not enough, no, I am enough. I am valuable. I am accomplished. I do learn from my mistakes, right? So you start feeling more loving toward yourself. So you need to adjust those thoughts and feelings. And again, coach is going to help accelerate it because you, it, you can't really generate new thoughts and feelings on your own, right? You kind of need an outside influence, whether that's podcast, whether that's the revelation from God, whether that's you know, through scripture or books or whatever, like you need outside influences to create new thoughts and feelings, just how it works. And then the last thing you need is practice, right? You got to practice these new skills. So today you might be like, oh yeah, my man, this is great. I really feel good listening to this. But then tomorrow you're going to go back to those same thoughts and that's just how your brain works. So we've got to put the new patterns in, then you got to practice them. So coaching and accountability will help you do that. Okay. So if you come and join strong, strong, strong men, strong marriages, you're going to practice this and other exercises every day. They're going to help you improve your relationship with God, yourself, your wife, your kids. Um, yeah, today we talked a lot about self-esteem. So, you know, we learn this, we learn communication skills, we learn intimacy skills, we help you build trust, communication, intimacy in your marriage. Uh, so you can just have that great relationship with God, yourself, your wife, your kids. Um, so come join us. Okay, visit strongmen.io or visit the link in the show notes. Uh, you'll fill out an application. If you're not quite ready to do that, join our email list and uh, you know you can get some updates there and there's a training there too. So, all right, men, stay strong. Come visit us again, strongmen, strongmen.io or uh, visit the link in the show notes, fill out an application. We'd love to work with you. All right, stay strong, men. We will see you next episode.